Hey there. Uh, welcome. My name is Seth Gamba. I'm an orchestra teacher in the Atlanta area, and I want to take a minute to talk about shoulder rests for violins or violas, specifically how to attach a shoulder rest to your instrument. Uh, this is something that's really, really important. I spend quite a lot of time with my students on, and so hopefully this will be something helpful for you. Uh, I have a variety of shoulder rests here. I'm not going to talk about all of them in detail, but I am going to go over a couple of them in detail. First thing, is that if you're first starting out on your instrument, use a shoulder rest. That's the first thing. If you are one of my students, you are using a shoulder rest, and I highly recommend everybody starting out on an instrument to use a shoulder rest. Very, very important for holding the instrument correctly, for supporting it properly, and for not having pain while you try to play it. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with this one. This is a sponge type of shoulder rest, and it's what most beginners start off with. For most beginners, particularly if you're young, 9, 10, 11 years old, uh, the sponge type works really quite well. As you get more advanced and as you get bigger, uh, moving to one of the other kinds of shoulder rests I think is actually pretty important. But we're going to start with this because it works well for most beginners, particularly if you're still 9, 10, or 11 and you're know, not using a full-size violin or viola yet then the sponge type works pretty well. First thing you need to know about the sponge type shoulder rest is that when you unpack it, it usually comes with a couple of rubber bands. The first thing you do, throw away those rubber bands. They're thin and they don't hold the thing very securely. They don't work very well. Uh, go to an office supply store, get one of these thicker ones. They work a lot better. So when you got your rubber band, you wanna bring it here, hook it across the back of the instrument and go across the violin or the viola from corner to corner, and a violin and viola are absolutely the same for how you attach the shoulder rest. Notice that I'm not pulling the, vi the rubber band all the way around to the top, just over the back corner here where the side meets it. I'm going to take the bottom of it here, I'm going to stretch it down, and wrap around the end button right here. Some violins or violas, that end button is a little bit tight against the tail wire, and you might have to work it down in there with your fingernail, but you'll be able to get it with a little persistence and you want to make this triangle shape across the back of the violin. That's the first step. Second thing, a couple of things you want to notice about the shoulder rest. It has a flat side and a curved side. It has a thin side and a thick side. All right, it's very important to keep track of these. When you put it on your shoulder, you want the thin side to be up on top of your shoulder and the thick side to go down onto your chest. A good way to make sure you remember that right is I have a little rhyme that I'll teach my students. I'll tell them thin behind the chin. So if you look at the chin rest on the instrument, the thin side goes behind the chin rest. The flat side goes against the back of the violin or the viola. So I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna take the flat side against the instrument. I'm gonna make sure the thin side is here right behind the chin rest. I'm going to lift up the rubber band, slide the shoulder rest under it, lift up the other rubber band, secure it into place. Next thing you need to know is almost nobody holds the instrument comfortably if the shoulder rest is like this, which is to say going straight across the instrument. The side behind the chin rest, that thin side for almost everyone, needs to be higher up towards the scroll. So I'm gonna go ahead and angle it a little bit about like that. Now that I've got it in this position, I'm ready to try. So I'm gonna put it up on top of my shoulder, turn my head slightly, I'm gonna hold the instrument. Now one of the things that I wanna be sure of, and this is gonna be true with all the different types of shoulder rests, is that the shoulder rest where it contours here should touch me from the top of my shoulder down to my chest without any gaps. So I don't know if you can see, maybe with the camera angle, maybe you can see in up here a little bit or maybe not. This is okay. The angle of it's not quite right for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm feeling where it doesn't touch me. It's touching me pretty well right here, but it's not so good up here. So I'm gonna change the angle. I've made it a little bit too steep for me, so I'm gonna bring it back a little bit like that, and I'm gonna try again. Now that's a lot better. It is very common, whenever I put my shoulder rest on, I never get it in the right spot the first time. I put it on, I test it, I adjust it, I put it on, I test it, I adjust it. A lot of times it'll take me two or three adjustments to get it in the right place. Do you want to make sure there it is, comfortable with no hands. All right, so that's the first kind, and this sponge works pretty well for most beginners. I'm going to go ahead and take it off here. 
The next kind, and these are the most common ones you see students step up to, is either the Kuhn, K-U-N, brand shoulder rest, or this one, which is called the Everest. These are the two most common shoulder rests that I see in my classroom for step-up instruments. Um, I've got a couple other here, others here that I'll talk about at the end. I'm going to go ahead and take this rubber band off, and let me show you the Kuhn shoulder rest here. The nice things about these more advanced shoulder rests is they're very, very adjustable. So sometimes it takes a little longer to get them in the right spot, but once you've got them in the right spot, they tend to support the instrument better and are much, much more comfortable. So here's the thing. A shoulder rest lives a fairly unhappy life. It spends its whole life getting smushed between the back of a violin or a viola and your head, and it's not happy about it. The reason I tell you this is because when you put the shoulder rest on, you always want to put it on as if it's frowning. If you've got the scroll towards the ceiling, the bottom of the instrument towards the floor, that shoulder rest makes a frowny face. If you put it on smiling, it will probably hurt you to hold the instrument. Very important that you remember that the shoulder rest frowns. It's unhappy because it's getting squished. Poor shoulder rest. So anyway, hopefully that'll help you remember which way to put it on. Now, the other mistake that people make with these is they try to just push it straight down on the instrument. What you want to do instead is you want to take one of the legs, hook it on the instrument, bring the other one down, and then down from here, you're going to slide it up, kind of like pulling up the pants of your violin. Like if your violin was a doll and you're putting doll clothes on it, you want to pull the shoulder rest up like you're pulling up a pair of pants onto a doll or something. You can't just push it straight down. You have to slide it up around the rims. Again, the side here behind the chin rest should be higher up towards the scroll. Almost no one is going to be comfortable playing with it like this. If you get it like this, it's probably just going to hurt really bad. So you want that side behind the chin rest to be higher up. I'll start with it about there. I'm going to test it. Not quite right. I want a little bit more angle on it right there is very comfortable for me. And again, that's common. You put it on, you test it, you adjust it, test it again, adjust it until you have it just right. You can hold it comfortably and you can feel the shoulder rest making solid contact from the top of your shoulder here down to the front of your chest where the shoulder rest ends. I find that the Kuhn shoulder rest works really well for people with broad shoulders. The contour seems to work well for that. People who are very slender and have very thin shoulders, I found, have a little more success with the Everest shoulder rest. And again, it goes on the same way. But the thing about the Everest, you want to make it frown, you want to put it down here, and then pull it up around the edges of the instrument. The Everest, you see here, has a little bit more contour. So I found for my students with very narrow shoulders, it does a little bit better job of going down the chest than the coon does. So people with broad shoulders tend to work better with the coon. People with narrow shoulders tend to do a little bit better with the Everest. But you know, it's no, no guarantee. So you guys, sometimes you have to try some different things. Um, a couple others here just to know that there's a ton of different kinds of shoulder rests out there and it may take some experimenting to find one that works the best for you. Um, the one that I like to use is this one. It's a Wolf Forte Primo. This is my shoulder rest. It's the one that I found the most comfortable. Uh, the Wolf shoulder rest, you can actually bend a little, a little bit. You can't do too much, but you can do a little bit of bending on them to help them fit the contour of your shoulder. Uh, this one, you know, I've had uh, a number of students use this over the years, the Bone Musica, which is a very expensive shoulder rest. But I've had some students who find comfort with this shoulder rest when they haven't been able to with anyone else. It's very, very soft metal. It's designed to be bent so that you can contour it perfectly to your shoulder so it hooks up here and then comes down here. It's actually designed for you to be able to bend it around. And some students find this, this one really, really comfortable where other kinds just never quite worked for them. Um, but this, these are just a few. There's a ton of different ones out there. The important thing to know is use a shoulder rest and that's how you attach it. And you gotta work on the angle of it a little bit to get it comfortable for you. So there you go. Um, if you found this video helpful, 
Yeah, please remember to like the video, uh, subscribe to my channel, uh, particularly for bass players. I have a lot of lessons on playing the double bass because that's my main instrument. But just, uh, just the same for the violin or the viola. I hope you found this helpful and perhaps we'll cross paths one day.